going on YouTube? This is this out here. This is the Micro 2 build from Tomo Quads. And I've been really looking forward to this one. I've always wanted to do a 2 inch build with 4S power. And that's what we're doing here. Now, for you guys out there that want to do 3S, we're going to go through what you would need to do that also. And we got a couple different options. But you may be wondering why the Baby Hawk is sitting there. And I'm going to tell you why the Baby Hawk is sitting there because I've had so many requests for a frame to upgrade the Baby Hawk to and also while in that process to upgrade the motors and do something really crazy with that power system. If you look up here in the corner, I have a link to how I upgraded my Baby Hawk to the 12 amp ESCs, the bullets. And so I already have those in here. So I highly recommend if you're going to do 4S with this, that you do upgrade to the 12 amp ESCs from Emacs. Their ESCs at Emacs are some of the best out there. And we also have the option too, if you don't have a Baby Hawk and you want to do this build, what I'm recommending for the uh, FC is to go with one of the fly towers. I've had great success with that. So you can go with fly tower F425. Anyhow, let's go through the parts and let's get right into the build guys. All right, so first off, what we're gonna be using here for the camera is this is a really cool little thing is the run cam micro swift 2 which has your osd and your voltage readout and all that information and if you click up here in the top right hand of the corner um, that will take you to the full review which covers everything from transition lighting speed to you know all the presets and everything awesome new camera from run cam and they were gracious enough to send me one of these to sponsor this build. So a big shout out to Run Cam. They're my favorite camera and our favorite camera here at Tomo Quads. Now for the VTX, we're gonna go with our favorite, which we use a lot here. Um, it's the Esheen VTX-03, switchable, clear up to 200 milliwatt. And it's very, very lightweight, so that's always a great option on anything like this. Now let's talk about what we're gonna use for motors. I was able to meet with Emacs, the Emacs guys at Flight Fest 2017. And, you know, I did a bunch of videos on the Baby Hawk. And I knew that they had the new RS-1106 coming out. So I told them I really wanted to go 4S with this. And they just came out with this new Emacs RS-1106. It's a 4500 kV. And it supports 4S. So that's what we're going to use for power plant. They also have a 6,000 kV version and I believe an 8,000 kV version. So if you want to run 2S, you would go with the highest kV. And then if you wanted to do a 2S to 3S build, then you would go with a 6,000 kV. I want to send a big thanks out to Emacs for sending me these motors. They just came out and they were gracious enough to send them to us and, and help us do a tie-in with Tomo Quads on this build. I've been super, super happy with them over the years and check them out. Okay guys, let's take a, take a quick look at what you get with the Tomo Quads Micro 2 kit. Then you're gonna get your bottom plate, which is 2.5 millimeter thick. And then you have your upper plate, which is 1.5 millimeter thick. Your two side pod plates are 1.5 millimeter thick. And then you get your motor soft mounts and your bag of standoffs and all of that stuff. You also get a really nice velcro strap for your battery and also want to make a point out too this frame is completely designed for the micro swift 2 from run cam so you know a lot of people had an issue that was one of the main things with the baby hawk complaints that i had with it and also from you viewers was the camera just wasn't 100 percent up to snuff so this is a perfect opportunity for you to upgrade that camera and go with the run cam micro swift 2 on the tomo quads micro 2 frame this kit also does come with um, the little mount for the aio camera okay now for you guys that have not disassembled the baby hawk yet i'm going to refer you to my video up here in the top right uh, where i upgrade the 6 amp ESCs to the 12s you need to do that because we're going up to an 1106 and it's way safer to have the 12s, and the 12s fit the micro arms. Keep in mind, the FEM2, you don't have to use singles. You can go with the FEM2 and then um, use it with 
a Cicada 10 or 12 or 15 amp 4-in-1 ESC. So those are possibilities too. I also want to make a point in order to take this FEM2 FC off of the Baby Hawk, you need to unsolder your two battery cables and then you'll reattach them after you get the battery cable out because it runs down here through the uh, bottom part of the Baby Hawk frame. Um, the batteries that I'm using are 4S and they are JST, so I'm going with the JST to start out. Um, you can go with an XT60, I'm sure many of you will go with an XT60 or, or an XT30. XT30 is definitely going to be the lighter option because this is a 2 inch build. So the next step is now that you got the battery connector disconnected and you were able to pull the Baby Hawk guts up off of the Baby Hawk frame, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go around here and we're going to desolder, disconnect each motor from the 12 amp ESCs. So the next step is going to be after you have your ESCs, your 12 amp ESCs on there, or if you had already done the upgrade with me on my channel and you got your motors, your 1104 is now disconnected from the 12 amp ESC, you need to take some double sided tape and cut that to the exact size of each one of the 12 amp ESCs so that we're ready for placement to stick it down onto the arms of the micro to frame. Um, another thing you need to do is, and as you can see, I have the flight controller turned upside down here. You need to get some um, other double-sided tape and you can use whatever you prefer to use. I'm using like a thick foam 3M tape and then I'm going to cut a strip here so that the flight controller board is just soft mounted right here onto the frame. So now that you got your flight controller uh, soft mounted with the double-sided tape and your ESCs down, make any final adjustments that you need to make. And what I'm going to recommend is that you go ahead and get your aluminum standoffs here and go ahead and put them down through. You have two on either side and then the one in the back. But the reason you want to do this is if I tilt this up here, you'll see that you're going to have this ESC just back to the edge of that. So you just want to double check that. If you measure it just right, it should sit enough away from the ESC from the standoff, the ESC should sit away from it, and then you're good to go. Um, this is going to be a very clean build, and I'm going to show you why. These 1106s from Emacs have shrink wrap right on the edge of the motors, as most brushless motors do, and it's going to sit on there with just enough room to, you know, trim these wires very shortly and connect them right to the ESC. So once you have your shrink wrap on there, and you push your shrink wrap back up onto the ESC towards the standoff. You're going to trim these wires to length, and you can do them a little bit longer and then tuck them into the uh, shrink wrap if you wanted to do that also. But you're going to set that on there, solder your wires real quick, and then heat up your shrink wrap. And then you're going to have an arm that's completely clean. And the shrink wrap's going to cover the ESC right up to the motor, and you'll be good to go. But I wanted to make a point of making sure to stick those standoffs in there and double check. Make sure you have the spacing that you need for your ESC and for the motor with the shrink wrap on the edge of the motor wires. Now, before we go over the, the connections of the VTX and the Runcam Micro Swift 2, um, you're doing a swap over so you already have your 5 volt coming out of here from where your previous camera was. I want to make a note though that the FEM2 board that comes with the Baby Hawk has the USB connector in the rear and as opposed to on the side, which is the standard form FEM2. So if you're looking at the diagram, which I'll have it listed in the description for the FEM2 board, keep note of that and follow the arrow on the board that shows the direction that it's facing so that you can make sure that you know any of your connections that you're using. Okay, now let's take a look at the wiring layout for the VTX-03 to the Runcam Micro Swift 2. And I have it all laid out here and connected. I'm going to shorten stuff, but I wanted to leave it all completely laid out so that you can see how we have it all connected. Here on the VTX-03, you have your power coming out, and that's going to power the VTX. So you want to run your positive and negative 5 volt from the FEM2 board to that. And then you're going to come out of the VTX-03 to power the cam. And that's going to connect to your harness with your 5 volt going to the cam, your ground, and your video. Um, the blue wire here is your um, battery voltage monitoring wire. And we're going to connect it right to the positive lead 
I'm just going to solder it right on top of the positive lead for the battery connector so that I'm getting straight directly off the battery and then that will give me my voltage readout on the Runcam Micro Swift 2. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and shorten your wires up, get them the way you want them, and then we're going to put the final plate together, connect the Runcam Micro Swift 2 into the top pod plates, and we're really close, guys. We're almost done here. This is a very quick build when you're doing a swap ever. And the next thing you want to do is get your two side pod plates, and you want to get these little tiny rings that come in the Tama Quads Micro 2 kit. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mount the Runcam Micro Swift 2 in between the two pod plates. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the Micro 2 is designed for the Runcam Micro Swift and Micro Swift 2. So take these little circles, run your screws that come with the Runcam Micro Swift and Micro Swift 2 through the side plates. Put the little circle on there and that's the spacing that also helps tighten up so that the camera doesn't move in between the pod plates. I also want to make one other quick point. Note that the top of the side plates where you got the little piece that slides into the very top plate of the Micro 2 will only fit into this plate one way. So if you try to push this into these two slots and it doesn't want to go, it's not because it's it's um, too tight and wasn't cut right. You need to flip this plate over. It's designed so that one side of the plate with these slots is tighter so that it holds the uh, side camera mount plates into the upper plate tightly. Uh, everything should just squeeze together after that. Um, I will make a point here of showing you that if you note the top plate, it has a little spot where you can um, have your number showing for the VTX A3. And then there's a hole right in front of the rear screw where you can feed your antenna up through. I also recommend taking a little bit of hot glue and securing the antenna connection to the VTX A3 once you get it lined up and you got it everywhere you want it to go. Um, I use a specific channel because I race with all my friends, so we all have our own channel. So I'm not really that concerned about changing um, my VTX channel and being able to see that. Another thing is, too, I like to use the Lemon DSMX SAT receiver, and it's a little bit more secure for me with the antennas um, to keep it in the box, so I usually run the box on top. Like I said, very simple build here, very quick, very easy. You can still get to um, your USB connector here very easily from the side in the back going in. So um, let's uh, wrap things up here and let's talk about batteries and propellers and then we'll get out of here. For props here, I'm going to first test the Furious FPV 2035 and then I have the Gym Fan 2035 four blades back there also. Um, so you can use any of the 2035 props. There's lots of different ones out there for that. Um, another thing as far as lipos goes, um, I'll make a point of telling you guys that I had some Storm 4S 350s, which is under what I'm recommending for this. I really feel like you need to be at a 450 to a 600 4S um, to really get your flight time and be in that three minute 20 second range so you have tattoo glacier ready-made rc they all make some great packs with the xt30 connector on there for that um, i'm probably going to switch over to the xt30 coming up i wanted to test those little packs because they are super super light but i'm getting you know, i'd say a little over two minutes flight time using that however there is a little bit of a performance increase but it's i don't feel that it is worth um the, sh the shortened flight time. So anyhow, that's the recommendations for your batteries and your props. Um, I'm going to do some more PID tuning. And then here when the full review, full review comes out of this, then... Uh, and so when the full review comes out, I will have the PIDs all for you guys. Right now I'm just set this thing back at the FEM2 back at base PIDs. And I'm starting from there as I go into the testing and review phase of this. But I wanted to get the, the build video done for all you guys. And 
a quick shout out once again to Emacs, Great Motors, and a quick shout out to Runcam for creating the Micro Swift 2. Awesome cam, OSD, just perfect for these kind of builds. They really took on the Micro Swift and then added upon that and given the community what they want with that also. Um, also a quick note too on these 1106s, it does have two different hole sizes for screwing your props on. So and that's a really nice feature with that also. But anyhow, thanks everybody for joining the channel. Stay tuned, you got the review of this coming up and then we're gonna move on to the little Predator X from Tomo Quads. And that's gonna be a two to three S build with the Emacs 6000 KV, which will let us be, you know, go from 2S to 3S and, and really push those genres of, of uh, battery size. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Sewed out. Happy flights, guys.